For a number of years, Console has been a great tool in OnSong that allows you to create and edit songs from your OnSong library on a computer. Console allows you to add or import multiple files into your OnSong library and make changes to them on a desktop or laptop computer right inside a web browser. Console also gives you a real-time preview of your chord chart just the way it will appear on your iPad. With the introduction of OnSong Premium, Console has been upgraded to allow you to manage the books and sets of your OnSong library as well as use new features like drag and drop. In this tutorial video, we will show you how to access, enable, and utilize Console for all your song editing needs. Let's get started. First things first, OnSong Console is an OnSong Premium feature. You can visit onsongapp.com slash premium to learn more about how to access console and other exciting features like it. So, you have access to console. Now what? To get started, first make sure that your iPad or iPhone is on the same Wi-Fi network as your computer. We'll select the OnSong network on this computer, and then the same OnSong network on this iPad. Next, let's open OnSong on the iPad and tap the Utilities menu here. Tap on the Console menu option from the Utilities menu, tap Enable Console, and take note of the web address listed here. Keeping that web address in mind, let's head over to our computer's web browser and type that in up here. Since the Console web application connects directly to your iPad or iPhone, there's no internet connection needed. You'll only need a local network connection. However, once we finish typing in the web address, you'll see on our iPad that we need to accept this connection to keep things secure. Tap on this alert to allow console to run on your computer. In console, you'll find the OnSong library on the left, a song editor in the middle, and the song viewer on the right side. Let's take a look at what we can do with our OnSong library first. For starters, you'll notice that the song list on the left opens to the collection, book, or set that is currently being viewed on your iPad. You can tell what song list is being shown by looking for its title here. You can also select what song list you want to view by selecting this icon to open the sidebar. Here, you'll see that there are three options to choose from, collections, books, and sets, which you can expand or collapse by clicking on them. Collections are your all songs list, which makes up all of the songs in your entire song library, as well as your unbound songs list, which includes all the songs in your library that aren't assigned to a book. Books include all of the books in your library, and sets contain all of the sets in your library. You can click this plus icon down here to add or import new songs into your all songs collection, or you can use it to add a new book or set to your library as well. Alternatively, you can right-click on any of these selections to open a similar list of actions that you can perform. Again, clicking Add Song allows you to add new songs into what you right-clicked on, and clicking Add Book or Add Set will add a new book or set to your library. Clicking Delete will delete the book or set that you right-clicked on. Let's create a set. We'll do that by using the plus button here and clicking Add Set. Just like creating a set in OnSong, we're able to give our set a name, or we can let the date we created the set be the set's name instead. When we've named our set, just click Create Set. There we go, our set is created, and we can add some songs to it now by clicking this plus button here. We can add either a new song, existing songs, or import files from our computer. Let's do all three, starting from the bottom. Import Files lets you import files from your computer into the set and your overall song library. Click it and then click Select Files to choose a file from your computer to import. We'll choose a handful from here by shift clicking and then click Choose. You will see these songs instantly added to your set and your overall library. When you're done importing files from your computer, just click this X to dismiss this menu. Let's add more songs by using the Existing Songs option. When you're in a set, clicking Existing Songs opens a palette that allows you to place or remove existing songs from anywhere in your library into your set by checking or unchecking them. Let's pick these songs here and then click Done to add them to our set. Really quickly, it's important to note that if you're in a book, clicking Existing Songs currently works a little bit differently. 
Here, it opens to your All Songs collection, where you can still check and uncheck songs to add them to that book. But with that being said, let's go back to our set. Clicking New Song allows you to input a song title and an artist name, as well as select the type of format you want your song to be in. Once you input this information and select your desired format, click this Save button to make sure that this song draft is saved to our set and library. Now that we have our set, you can scroll through the set list here and click on a song to load it in the editor and see a preview. Songs are automatically added to the set in the order that we selected them, but you can make songs easier to find by sorting them using these column headers here. Click them to sort alphabetically by song title or by key in ascending or descending order. You can also type in the search field here and press the Enter key on your computer keyboard to quickly search for songs. If you want to change the order of the songs in a set, you can use drag and drop. Simply click and hold on a song to drag and reorder it to anywhere you'd like in the set. Finally, you can delete a song from a set, book, or collection by clicking the song and then pressing the delete or backspace key on your computer keyboard. If you ever want to delete a song from your entire library completely, click that song anywhere in console, and then click the delete button here within console. Don't forget, you can always refresh your browser at any time to restart console and make sure that everything is working properly for you. Now that we've got navigating our song library down, let's take a look at using console's palettes to edit songs. We'll use this song that we started creating within console just a moment ago. Locate this toolbar above the text editor in the middle of the screen. Here you can click on metadata, insert, or text tools to toggle these palettes on and off. These palettes give you quick access to editing and formatting features that update as you switch songs. As previously discussed, delete will delete the currently viewed song from your entire library, and we'll get to extract later. Let's take a look at each of the metadata, insert, and text tools palettes and see how they help us write our chord charts. The metadata palette allows you to specify musical information about the song. Type in each field and console will write out the metadata for you in the editor. The metadata palette will adapt how it writes this information to match the type of song formatting you chose. If you choose the on song file format, the meta tags are separated by just colons. If you use the chord pro format, curly braces surround the meta tag and chord pro syntax is used. Key adjusts the key of the song, and you can toggle minor keys on and off by clicking this M. Similarly, capo adjusts the capo settings of this song. Tempo and time signature will affect the metronome feature of OnSong, while the duration setting will adjust the speed of auto-scrolling. Flow allows you to rearrange a song based on section labels, which we will review shortly. Rights management allows you to input copyright or CCLI information into your song, as well as determine what other users can do with your song. When we are all done, we can close the metadata palette. The insert palette provides buttons for quickly adding chords and sections to your song, or to apply line-based formatting. Let's click on some sections and type lyrics to start creating our song. We'll type some chords, either above the lyrics or within the lyrics, surrounded by square brackets. As long as we're consistent throughout the song with our chord style, console will recognize either one. As we add chords, you'll see that they are automatically detected in our song and added to the insert palette. Let's add some more chords now by clicking on those buttons. We can even add line formatting like bold, italic, text color, or a highlight by placing the cursor on a line and then clicking how you'd like it formatted. You can apply multiple styles to the line. Console supports standard named colors, but you can also specify colors as HTML color codes, like this. The Text Tools palette gives you tools to help with editing text. For instance, we can search and replace all instances of D minor with just D. As previously mentioned, OnSong understands both bracketed chords and chords over lyrics as valid chord formats, and you can toggle between them using the chord format toggle buttons. 
The Fix Alignment Spaces button will automatically remove extra spaces from between chords if you've imported and converted from a word processing document that used a variable width font like Times New Roman or Arial. Now let's check out the song viewer over here. You may have noticed that it updates as you type in the song editor. Click on low light to see how your chart will look with low light mode enabled. The pages toggle can show you how your song may break if it's printed. By the way, you can add four hyphens on a line in the song editor to force a page break. The lead feature makes console lead your iPad or other device when navigating through songs, while the follow feature makes console follow along with your device as you pick songs or scroll on the device. If you want to adjust your view, just click and drag on the pane dividers to expand and shrink different areas of the screen. To change the formatting of the song, click on the Styles button to open the Styles palette. Here you can change your song's font, text sizes, or change the highlight or font color of the chords. You can also toggle parts of the song on and off using the power icons on the right side. Open the Chords palette by clicking on the Chords button. On top here, you'll find four buttons that let you choose what chord style you'd like to use between Alphabetical, Nashville, Roman numeral, or solfege. You'll notice that while the chords change, the key is still displayed in the upper right corner. You can also apply transposition, capo, and change the way that chord diagrams appear on the screen. Again, tap on the power icons on the right to decide whether transposition and capo are applied or to turn diagrams on or off. You can also change the position of chord diagrams in your song here as well as select what type of instrument you'd like to see chord diagrams for. Lastly, if you are playing an instrument that does not play at concert pitch, you can adjust the chords that appear throughout the song to apply for those instruments here. We mentioned it earlier, but you may have noticed the Save button appear here as we've made changes to our song. When we have the song looking just the way we want it, we can click on the Save button, or we can save using the classic keyboard shortcut of Control or Command S. The new updates made in the editor, as well as any formatting or transposition we've applied, are now saved into that song on our device's OnSong library. If the song is currently being viewed in OnSong, it's automatically updated there too. Remember that if you choose a different song in console or if you try to close the browser window while you have unsaved changes, console will prompt you that you will lose your changes. This gives you the opportunity to save your changes. Up to now, we have only discussed how console handles text files. When you import a different file type, like a PDF file, these files appear on the right side as a PDF. Use the View as Text, View as File drop-down here to toggle between the text-based version of the song and the external file version. Some file formats are not able to be viewed in a browser, so those may only download to your computer when viewed. You can also use the Extract button in the editor to perform an optical character recognition scan on a non-text file, like a PDF, to convert it to text as best as possible. The scan isn't perfect, so you may need to make some adjustments afterwards. Once you have your song the way you like, you can export it using a variety of formats, or print it. Pretty cool, huh? To use the export feature, just make sure your song is saved to OnSong first to allow the device to generate the file. One more thing to note is that the song viewer is fully interactive. You can click on a section to select it, or you can click on a chord to view a chord diagram pane along the bottom. You can even click on chord diagrams to set those as a preference for the song, while the viewer scrolls like any other panel, you can also use the arrow keys to scroll up and down. Console uses your scroll preferences to determine the speed of scrolling. This also allows you to use wireless foot pedals with your computer to scroll through your chart. As you can see, OnSong Console is jam-packed with tools and features to make editing your OnSong library, books, and sets much more easy and efficient. We will always be expanding and improving console, so if you have any questions or suggestions, please reach out to us at onsongapp.com/support. Thanks for watching.